Well, you may have heard of that saying, you don't really know what goes on behind closed doors. Well, I'm in suburban Sydney and you will be astounded at what happens in this suburban household. There's an ordinary guy doing extraordinary things. Come and check it out. Here he is. This is Josh Cook. He's known as a bird whisperer and also the bird man of Bronte. We're going to go in and meet all the wonderful birds that Josh is about to introduce us to and who he looks after. Come on through. So these guys here are the welcome swallows. These guys here are the ravens. Okay, so this little guy's got a broken wing. These are my baby bantams. And they're my two blue and gold macaws, which I free fly. So Josh, what exactly does a bird whisperer do? Yeah, I look, uh, my job and my daily life involves working with birds. So, um, you know, my speciality is free flight training, um, but I also work with injured native birds. So, you know, orphaned and injured wildlife, I guess. Um, I get them better, I rear them up and I release them. So tell us who you have in care at the moment. I've got a kookaburra with a broken wing. It keeps the wing nice and still. I've got a uh, little kingfisher with an injured wing as well, a sacred kingfisher. He's on the improve and he's doing a little bit of flying now, so it's all looking up for him. I've got a noisy pitter. And look at the colours on the wing. I've got six welcome swallows. Yeah, a spotted pardalo. Um, there's a silver eye as well. Um, then I've got two ravens you can hear in the background. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few at the moment. There's a cocky. <laughs> the list goes on and on. I mean, this goes on and on. it's a 24-7 job and I mean, I know that you don't get a lot of money for what you do, so what keeps you motivated to keep doing it, really? I, I really love working with birds and I guess my hobby has turned into my career. I love the, um, the, you know, the environmental factor that birds are still living with us in our uh, urban environment. Um, I've got a lot of respect for them. Uh, I love, some of my best mates are birds. <laughs> We're about to do a very special feed of some welcome swallows. So what are you about yeah. to do now? I'm just going to feed them some mealworms, oh, um, I mean. which is their favourite delicacy. Do you think they know it's meal time? They definitely know it's meal time. I can or... see them flapping. I just think it's absolutely amazing. Such a little, little bird. And why are they in your care? Well, they come in as juveniles and fledglings. They're not ready to leave the nest. So, yeah, people find them and hand them in. And then I, I, they give them to vets and then the vets call me or the wildlife organisation and then I pick them up and, yeah. You're the go-to man when it uh -huh. comes to birds. That's right. Well, Josh has actually taught one of these little welcome swallows to free fly. I just think it's absolutely amazing to actually connect with that bird and teach him to fly away and come back home. That's it. Josh, does he know what's about to happen? Yeah, he does. He knows what he's looking around, checking out the view, making sure there's nothing. There he goes. How does it make you feel when you see that little swallow you've been taking care of every single day fly free like this? Well, it's quite exhilarating. I mean, it's part of the process of a, what we call a soft release. So we're giving their birds the opportunity to come back and feed until they actually find their feet in the wild. <laughs> I can't even see him now. No, he's, How he's long does it take around. to come back? Oh, he might do it for half an hour. Each time he goes longer and longer, you know? It's all him getting, it's all about him building up his uh, stamina and his fitness and eventually he won't come back at all. There he goes, straight over. <laughs> there he goes. Come on. That is amazing, Josh. <laughs> Job well done. Ah. This is a big baby. Josh, we're in the hallway of your house and you're about to feed a macaw. That's right. <laughs> He's a five week old baby blue and gold macaw. And we'll weigh him first. He was 854 this morning and now he's 920, 930. So that's a great sign, he's thriving. Yeah, he's doing well. <laughs> so how did he come to be with you, Josh? The mum bird wouldn't feed him as a baby. Look at the look on his face. He's on four feeds a day and it's about six hours in between each feed. So 
He's Jew. How long will you be looking after this little guy or girl? Well, yeah, I'm quite sure. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, it'll probably, well, it will be three months before she's eating on her own. I mean, it's around the clock work. Yes, it is. It's not often I get to go away on holiday, but, um, you know, I'm doing things that I love. Yeah, who needs a holiday? <laughs> That's it. There you go. I'm asleep now. We're living in an urban environment, but there's still all this nature and birds around us and beauty. And I mean, we can either ignore it or you can embrace it. So yeah, I like to call it the new nature. This cocky has been in Josh's care for almost a year now, That's and right. now's the big moment. We're about to let him fly free. I know, and it is, you know, their homeland. They've been here for hundreds of thousands of years, so we really need to respect that. <laughs> Come on, kiddo. Good luck. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, there he goes. Yeah, he might come back or he, he might just go off on an adventure. <laughs> so how does it make you feel when you actually get to this stage and you let him go? It's fantastic. I mean, you know, um, I'm elated. You know, the bird's off doing cocky things. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this story as much as we have bringing it to you. And remember that Josh is just an everyday guy doing extraordinary work with animals. And we'd really like to help him continue his work. He's not a big organisation, he's a volunteer. So if you'd like to make a donation so Josh can continue helping this native wildlife, we'll put all the details up at the end of this story.